morning everybody and how jolly nice to see you it is the 30th of may and we know that we mustn't cast a clout until may is out don't know what that is but you can do it next week because may will be out bank holiday weekend and i guess folk are going away because it's also half term isn't it and that will be great and i hope you have a good time away with the kids or whatever you're doing uh, enjoying the sunshine it does shine in the uk the rain has stopped the sun has come so we're doing good and we're also doing good because those tremendous words at the beginning nothing can separate us from the love of god in christ jesus i find that astonishing and uh, it doesn't mean to say that everything uh, is easy peasy we know that don't we this current pandemic tells us that i think i often think of that line in psalm 23 that says even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you are with me god is with us and that's the kind of god we have come to worship the one who draws near to us even in those dark times we've got some great things this morning i think sally's speaking to us uh, sally heath uh, one of our elders and she's done a brilliant job i reckon and uh jill jolly is gonna share a bit of her story we've also got a very special little piece from our oldest member his name's noel and he'll be um talking to us just very uh, just a tiny bit later on it was great to be able to go and visit him this week for the first time in ages he's in a care home now and he's a tremendous man so that was a, a, a great thing something to look forward to we got some, a message from some friends from india so there you are what's not to like but we begin where we should begin and that's in worship let's draw near to god this morning in faith and hope as we worship shadows deeper we do Every nation and tongue, 
of a blessing and honor and glory. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He Is he worthy? Is he worthy? He is. He Well, here we are, everybody, and we are with this morning, Jill Jolly, known to a number of folk I know, perhaps not to others. And it's really good to just spend a bit of time with her this morning. And it'd be good to uh, know a little bit about you, Jill. How are you doing? Yeah, fine. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, so I am Jill Jolly. Some people may know me as Mike Jolly's mum or Erin and Zach Jolly's granny. Um, we've been here in Thornbury now for... 15 months uh, but before that we'd come down regularly to visit the family and um, we'd lived in Kent not far from Canterbury and we'd been there for oh, a lot of years 36 years wow. yeah. so that's a hu huge move for you so yeah. you you decided to make this big uh, momentous move right in the middle of a pandemic and that was a great well idea, it hadn't actually it? started because we, we put our house on the site put up for sale uh, beginning of 2019, I think it was indeed. Mm. Yeah, we'd lived there a long while. I'd been um, a radiographer. That was my original career. Um, and I had come to know the Lord in 1977. Gosh. A long while ago. I'd been a singer and a playing the organ person in church for a long while, but I hadn't known Jesus. <laughs> and I got to know him then, which was wonderful. Um, so yeah, I worked and we lived in Kent. We did lots of different things in the church there. I think we've done most things actually in the past. Um, and then 2017, sadly, my mum and my sister died. Mm. And that sort of freed us up from our ties in Kent. And we started to think we ought to come west to be near our children because our other son in, was in Bradley Stoke. He's just recently moved to Bath. Mm. So we took a while to get over the bereavement thing, though I don't know whether you ever really get over it. Um, and then started to think we ought to come west, put our house on the market. It was out the market for ages and ages and ages. And then suddenly we sold and we were on our way. We got here and then lockdown happened. <laughs> so that compounds a kind of difficult, a kind of difficult, challenging thing to move in mm. the first place and into an even more difficult and challenging thing. So how's that been for you kind of trying to settle when you can't really meet up with anybody particularly. No, it, it's been really difficult. I mean, we determined that, I mean, we knew that we wanted to come to Thornbury quite a while ago, the church and that had a real um, attraction and a pull to us. We just felt that that's where God wanted us to be. And then when we came, we thought, well, we need to get involved in the town. And I think we went, I went to a couple of choir meetings and a couple of Pilates classes. Pete went to a gardener's club meeting, like we're gonna get stuck into Thornbury and then bang and it was really odd because we'd come from quite a busy life very involved in the local church um, I did quite a lot of discipling with people and I passed all roles and stuff and then suddenly here we were in this house in this town that we didn't know very well we got our children around which was a lifesaver in some respects but then you don't want your life totally to be there you've got to have a, a life haven't you so yeah. yeah it was strange I felt actually as if we'd been uprooted and then stuck on top of soil without our roots in um mm. which was a very strange very strange thing and um i felt very low sometimes certainly in the first lockdown i felt i couldn't understand why god had brought us here and then that had happened and then i started to realize that actually he wanted us to spend more time with him and to rest in him and to enjoy getting to know the locality mm. um without being busy which is what we normally are. We're normally very busy people. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes busyness can kind of mask other things, can't it? A bit. Mm. It's certainly yeah. can. So 
I mean, you're, you're, I guess, you're, of course, your experience is unique, but there will be lots and lots and lots of people who throughout this period have found it really difficult to navigate for whatever reason. So how, you know, has your faith kind of uh, helped you during this period of time, would you say, Jill? I think when everything else is uncertain, God doesn't change. And I think he, he's really come close to both Pete, my husband and I, um, in perhaps a different way. We've always felt, you know, he's helped us do things and, and be people that he wanted to use. And then suddenly it's just about him and us. And just, I mean, we haven't spent ages in the Bible or we've read different things. I have read some books that I have had on my shelf for a long while and thought I must read that sometime. Um, and that's just been good, but it's just been just been his presence more than anything else and knowing um, that he's with us and that actually he hasn't forgotten us and that he he will open the doors to us in his timing mm. so just learning to to just trust him really for that mm. yeah that's absolutely fantastic i'm just going to do a cut there to turn this heat off <laughs> turn it, i can i can edit that together um, <laughs> I'm just going to say about our wonderful small group and people. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I know, so I'll start there. So I know also that um, you've got, you've, you have, as you've been able to, thrown yourself into things and you're part of a small group as well, haven't, aren't you? And that's been yeah, really that's been, you. that's been really good. We were put into um, Julie and Charles's Lemmings small group with people that actually really are, have been just, the right people to get to know they're a great crowd in that group and uh, lots of bible knowledge and long-term christianity in their lives and so we've yeah they've been great actually and really supported us and um, and the other thing that was um david i asked about going into some sort of prayer thing at one point and david has put uh, lawrence put us in to inspire group so i've been meeting with two other ladies and that's been really good on a slightly deeper level to have somebody who knows how I'm feeling or if I'm struggling about something or they're struggling that we can pray. I mean, that's primarily been on Zoom, a mm. um, few meetings in gardens. But even so, I feel that I've got a really good friendship with those ladies. Mm. Um, and then I've walked with the other ladies in, in our small group, uh, Caroline and Finney's been a real support as well. So these, God's put these people in our lives but interestingly you still felt a bit loose in the soil <laughs> not quite there but we went back to see some friends in Kent and also our foster daughter there um, two weekends ago and it was sad leaving them in some respects but not like it has been and then when we came back into Thornbury I really felt I'd come home for the first time and that was really really lovely because I know now whether the children stay around or not and both my boys are those that move around and do yeah. things yeah. God wants us here yeah, that, well, that's fantastic, and we're really absolutely thrilled that you are here. So, kind of people, people who are, you know, in your sort of uh, at your sort of stage of life, lots to do with grandchildren, I know, and all of those sort of things, but also, you know, kind of the ch the changes that take place as well. How how best could we perhaps pray and support people in that uh, in that group? Would you say, Jill? I think when life changes. Um, you need a new sort of support while you get used to those changes. Now, God's that number one, mm. but it's good to know that, to be aware if, if somebody new comes in or if somebody's just retired or somebody has had a big change in their life, to come alongside people really and, and mm. do the simple things, just say, how are you doing? Because mm. um, sometimes you just want somebody to appreciate the fact that, that things are a, a bit tricky and a bit new and, mm. and that life will settle then. And so whether that's, as I say, retirement, change of circumstances, moving, all these things can make us feel unsteady. And if you've got people around you that are strong and know the, around here and can sort of introduce you to stuff um, and be with you, it's, it's God will never leave you or forsake you, but it's good to have the people around you to support you. Mm. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. And also just raising that really important point about small groups and stuff is something that we, we do really try to emphasise with people. And I would encourage anybody watching in if they're not part of a small group to get in touch and we'll find a way to integrate you somehow or other but to say again it's really great having you and pete amongst us jill and thank you very much for sharing with us this morning no problem thanks paul so let us pray together 
Lord, we thank you for the health care we enjoy in this country and call out for mercy for those with much less. We pray for the hands of NHS workers to bring healing and wholeness to body and mind. And we pray for scientific and medical understanding and responses to the virus to be developed quickly. Lord, we pray for each frontline staff worker. And we ask for protection from the virus, for wisdom as they care and for stamina as they face new challenges. We pray for those undergoing or waiting for health care during this time. Lord, have mercy. Well, we bring to you our community and neighbourhood and we just want to thank you for this place that we uh, are living in. We pray particularly for good relationships, trust and support across this community. Show us as a church community where we can offer ourselves in welcome, friendship and hospitality to one another and to the town. We pray for those people, particularly at this time, who have no homes, no one to belong to in that sense and no sense of belonging. May they not be forgotten in this time of crisis. Help us to be quick to meet the needs of the most vulnerable. Father, at this time of the year, we thank you for the beauty of creation. We thank you for the vivid colours and the new life that's all around us. We thank you for the bird songs that we hear that reminds us that you care for us. We hear the groaning of creation and join with your spirit and creation with the expectation of the new creation. Give us today our daily bread. We give thanks for the abundance of food we enjoy in this country and ask for your mercy on the increasing numbers of people who go hungry. As you have blessed us in your abundance, help us to bless others. Lord, have mercy. Father, we, we pray a blessing over nursing homes and elderly residences. And we thank you that for the care and community they bring to the elderly. And we pray for them as we know that the virus has been striking hardest here. We pray for all those who work in this community and we ask for your strength for them, for energy and protection as they bring your care in touch. We pray for the elderly, for those who may have been disconnected and still may be disconnected from loved ones. May they be drawn to your presence have access to your word and to meet you in the silence. We pray for those living with dementia. We ask for your presence to bring order over their inner chaos and security over confusion. Give us eyes to see, hearts to love, words to speak and hands to care for those near to us. We thank you, Lord, for those for these places of creativity, for the parks and community centres where we can have connection and fun, once full of playing and laughter, but now often empty and closed. We pray for those struggling with mental and emotional health and isolation, for those who live day to day, gripped by fear, far from laughter. Light of the world, penetrate the darkness today. Maybe we, may we be quick to draw near, to bring your comfort, your hope on a dark day. We pray for and thank you for the families uh, in the church and in the community and we pray for those today who are living without family just now disconnected and missing those that they love 
we bring to you Lord parents juggling school work and home in this time of pressure we ask for protection and strength for marriages in the midst of this extra stress may we in your power offer a spirit of joy love peace harmony patience and forgiveness We ask you, Holy Spirit, to stir our hearts, to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, hearts that seek your kingdom in Thornbury and around the world. Meet us with your perfect love, which casts out fear, and give us the gift of faith in these uncertain days. Empower us with your spirit so we might be witnesses for you. Open doors of opportunities so that we might declare the mysteries of Christ. Father, reveal yourself in the fragility of human life. Stir a hunger in our community that only you can fill. As we celebrate the goodness of humanity and cheer on our frontline workers, stir up, stir up questions to which only you are the answer. As we struggle and juggle a new way of life, as we face similar fears, may we come alongside the people in Thornbury in our community and be ready to share the hope that we have. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. And from Psalm 67, one, verses one to three, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth your salvation among all nations may the peoples praise you O oh god may all the peoples praise you amen amen, amen. amen. In Psalm 62, verse 5 to 8, we read, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. cares increase in my heart your consolation calms my soul and when I think I have lost my foothold Lord your mercy holds me up the Lord will be
as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, we've got a couple of extra items, if you like, uh, today. The first is via our friend Dave Day and the Bridge Trust Limited, which is a fantastic chari Christian charity that's supporting uh, aid and uh, aid work and medical work, as well as doing Christian leadership training, all sorts of things, uh, largely focused into India and Zambia as well. So uh, this is a particular connection of theirs with a, a, a couple who are pastors there called Jay and Lizzie. They, I, I think the, the relationship has been there for many, many years. And this couple are amongst, of course, that community of Christians there in Delhi are doing a fantastic job seeking to bring love, the love of Christ in both word and deed as they take uh, health care and uh, they've got a big feeding program. I think they've, they've fed colossal numbers of people. They've supplied lots and lots of meals over this period, uh, of which has been an incredibly difficult one for India. We've seen much of that on the news, haven't we? And it's been absolutely awful for them. So it's lovely to hear firsthand, in a sense, what they've been doing. So that's the first bit. The second bit is just a very short little message from uh, Noel Dufresne. As I said, he's our oldest member, 96 years old. A remarkable man, but it was lovely just to see him the other day for the first time in a long time, because obviously he's not been able to visit during this period of time. So, But I thought you'd like to see Noel or meet him for the first time. But do pray for him. He's a, he's a wonderful man. Millions of people in India live below the poverty line. Love India is engaged in lifting them up as well as providing them with necessary things that pertain to a decent life. Love India is engaged in many areas of charity for these poor and underprivileged people to free them from the clutches of poverty. Well, this is Pastor Jane Lissi from New Delhi, India, and we are so glad to bring this few updates what's happening in this nation. And last year when uh, the lockdown started with this pandemic and the Home Ministry of India sent a letter to us asking us, yes, whether we would like to join with them in the battle against the coronavirus. And uh, so we chose to feed the poor people because through the slum schools, we've been already doing it. And uh, we began to take up this uh, project from April 2020. Uh, thousands of people have been helped in this way in the last full year. And when this new year started, you know, we thought it's going to be over. But then again, the new strain, the second virus has really made a havoc mm -hmm. in the lives of the people A miserable condition. They don't know anything because no schools have started yet. And again, lockdown, even now as I'm sharing with you, we are in lockdown. We do not know how it's going to be. Uh, the money that um, we receive mainly goes to the people who are starving, who have no means of having any food because of so many lockdowns. Uh, the, the people are not able to go out and do some uh, daily labor, uh, labor job or labor work and uh, uh, earn some livelihood. So they are shut up in their houses, in the small huts with their children and the family together, literally starving. And um, we distribute food to these people in the slums mainly of Delhi. And uh, the, the, we distribute two methods or two ways of uh, food distribution. One is dry grocery to the people because in those areas we don't have a working kitchen to cook and give the food. Uh, each one gets a packet uh, of food or grocery and that will go for um, two and a half to three days so they can have food as a family. It contains like a rice and wheat flour lentils, oil, and some soap and sanitizers and masks. That's what we give to each family uh, in the eastern side of Delhi. And the west side of Delhi, <coughs> we have a wonderful kitchen provision. So we cook the food every day. Uh, these people in those slums, they get hot cooked food. Uh, this food, like we sometimes we give rice and chickpeas, rice and beans, rice and uh, uh, lentils and sometimes mixed vegetables like every day they get uh, some food in the lunch time uh, you know and I look at the photos of the little children coming and getting the food with smile and joy in their faces that brings such a satisfaction that we can give them at least one meal a day and they can survive by having one meal a day it's such a blessing 
we really thank God for this provision and we really thank God that we are able to do this. Thank you. We believe that, you know, Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me food. I didn't have clothes, but you just clothed me. Mm. I was outside, you brought me in health, you know, food and water, drink, basic things of life. And we really love God and all of us. Thank you for standing with us in this time of this pandemic. It never seems to be over in India. But then there are many opportunities, even though it is spiritually dark. I shall pass through this world at once. Any good, therefore, I could do, or any kindness that I can show to any human being, mm -hmm. let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, or I shall not pass this way again. Just like this, the, the star thrower, we can make a difference in the life of people. Thank you for standing with us and uh, your, by your sacrifice, by your prayer. And it helps many, many people. Otherwise, they don't have you know, anything to eat. We thank God for all the good things that God is doing. And together, we can bring changes in somebody's life. We really thank you. And uh, we are really appreciating all of our Slum School teachers. They're all involved in distributing. Please pray that God will protect our leaders and our volunteers when they are inside the slums. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hello, church members. This is no the friend. And I'm speaking in a little house at the moment, <laughs> watching the traffic go by. <laughs> <laughs> and they want me to say something to you, to you all. Well, cheers, church members. <clears throat> I hope to sort out this business of saying hello to people when they're so old. Some in their 80s and things like that. They've, they've got there somehow, and some people haven't. So they might have some secrets to tell us. <laughs> keep, in other words, keep out the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, bless all you people who I'm speaking to. Is there any good work you can keep up that'll help others? That's the main thing in these days. Try and do it for them. And they'll be very pleased that you have said something reasonable to them. Thank you all. Thank you. John chapter 14, 15 to 26. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord... Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? 
Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you, you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Good morning. Through this summer period, our series is about the Holy Spirit and the difference that he makes to our lives as Christians. This morning, our reading came from the long discourse in John's Gospel, which took place during the Last Supper. I find it hard to know what the feelings of the disciples really were on this occasion. They clearly knew that something was up, but they don't really seem to have grasped the seriousness of the situation. Despite that, Jesus was determined to prepare them for what was coming, both in the next few hours, but also longer term, when he was no longer with them. Today's reading is part of that preparation and it shows us the importance of the work of the Holy Spirit not only in their lives, but also in the lives of all of Jesus' followers, including us. As I've pondered what these verses tell us of what is promised for us in the Holy Spirit, three words have really jumped out at me. The word orphans, advocate and home. In verse 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Some versions translate this word differently, but the meaning is the same. I became an orphan three years ago next week. I miss being able to tell my parents news about the family, asking their opinions and settling disputes between me and my siblings although they're not the ones that we had when we were children, well, not openly, they're now more around memories. Things like what happened on that particular holiday, because we all have a different memory. Or filling in blanks in our understanding of the family. Things like why Uncle Sid was never invited to parties and was always spoken of in hushed tones. For a young child to be orphaned, it leaves them totally bereft with the foundations of their life stripped away. The disciples had spent three years following Jesus around Israel and he'd been like a parent to them in many ways. He taught them many things, explaining things they didn't understand, like Judas's question in our reading today, and also settling disputes between them. Even at the Last Supper, according to Luke, they were arguing about who was the greatest. Following Jesus' death, resurrection and ascension, they needed to know that they weren't orphans. They weren't bereft. They weren't alone. Jesus promises he would come to them and they would see him. So what would the Holy Spirit do that would ensure that they weren't like orphans? Verse 26 says that he would teach them all things and remind them of everything that Jesus has said. We know that many of the things that Jesus taught them confused them. They were always asking for clarification. And that continued to be the case after Jesus was no longer with them physically. I find it happens so often when someone explains something to me. I may feel that I've understood it at the time, but later I want to ask subsequent questions. And we saw something of this when we looked at the account of the disciples meeting Jesus after his resurrection on the road to Emmaus a few weeks ago. There he explained the scriptures to them concerning his death and resurrection. They also faced situations that they hadn't had to face while Jesus was alive, especially as they carried out their mission to be the witnesses to the ends of the earth. And so Gentiles were converted who didn't follow the Jewish laws. Food laws and the practice of circumcision were particular issues which they needed the Holy Spirit to help them decide upon. 
in Acts 10 and 11, we see the Holy Spirit giving clear guidance to Peter about accepting Gentiles on equal terms. We too don't understand all that the Bible is teaching us and we face situations that hadn't even been conceived of in the first century. We too need the Holy Spirit to teach us all things. We need to see where he is working, what he is doing and hear him tell us what to do and where to go. Over the three years, Jesus must have taught his disciples many things. John, at the end of his gospel, acknowledges that Jesus did many things that he didn't record. They needed to remember those things. Partly, they needed to remember them so that they could tell others and write them down so that we can read them all these centuries later. And they also needed to remember those things in their everyday lives. Some years ago, there was a slogan, what would Jesus do? As often orphans, we often ask that about our parents. What would mum do in that situation? With Jesus, the question we should ask is, what is Jesus doing? For he hasn't left us as orphans. He's come to us through the Holy Spirit. So often we think it would be so much easier if Jesus was still around as he was for the first disciples, telling us what to do. But our passage today shows us that he is still with us through the Holy Spirit, still teaching us new things and reminding us of things that we've forgotten. So how do we hear what the Holy Spirit is teaching us and reminding us? Reading the Bible regularly is essential. I'm sure you've all had that experience of reading a familiar passage and something in it has smacked you between the eyes as if you've never heard it before. That's the Holy Spirit drawing out teaching either for the first time or as a reminder. Meeting with others to study the Bible, listening to sermons and talks and podcasts, reading commentaries and other Christian books are all obvious and important ways in which the Holy Spirit speaks to us. He also speaks to us through nature and everyday events. Whenever I see a dead bird, I'm reminded of Jesus' words. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care? So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And the Holy Spirit brings us peace and comfort. The verse after where the passage today finished is the famous words of Jesus, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Such things we need reminding of. The second word that came out to me was the word advocate. In Greek, it's the word paraclete and different versions translate that differently. Some as advocate, some as comforter, some as helper. Each of those speaks of someone called alongside to provide help. An advocate is the legal term for someone who stands up in court and explains to the judge and jury how things are from the client's point of view. He pleads the case. When we're bereaved, a comforter is someone whose being with us gives us strength to cope for the next step. They don't actually change the situation in that our loved one is still dead but their presence enables us to cope with the disaster. A helper combines both of these ideas. It's important that Jesus describes the Holy Spirit as another advocate. That implies a separate and distinct being. The doctrine of the Trinity, that there is one God, but within the Godhead there are three distinct and separate persons, the Father, the Son, that's Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is one of the most difficult theological ideas to get our heads around. But this passage and others in the New Testament clearly teach it, and Jesus' followers through the ages have experienced God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In this passage, we catch a glimpse of the interplay between the persons of the Godhead, with the Son asking the Father and the Father sending the Holy Spirit in the Son's name. 
One of the things that the Holy Spirit will help us with, according to our passage, is to comprehend something of this. We need help with it because it isn't an understanding that comes naturally to humans. The world, in this case, those who didn't love Jesus, can't accept and therefore they can't know the Holy Spirit or see Jesus after his death. Only those who love Jesus and keep his commandments. Now, that idea might sound a bit like the Holy Spirit is the end of term gift for the one who's achieved perfection or has tried the hardest. But what it's actually saying is that keeping Jesus's commandments is an outward sign of loving Jesus. And as a consequence of loving Jesus, the Holy Spirit will be in that person. Although Jesus and the Holy Spirit are separate persons within the Godhead, they share roles. This passage tells us that they're both advocates for us. Jesus was there for his disciples, helping, comforting, encouraging, speaking on their behalf to the Father. His departure won't leave them without an advocate. The Holy Spirit will continue this role and do so forever, so for us as well as for them. You may recall recently in the series we did on 1 John that Jesus there is described as the advocate with the Father, he continues to plead the case of his disciples, including us, before the Father, just as the Spirit continues forever as our advocate on earth. Another way in which the Holy Spirit continues Jesus' work is as the Spirit of truth. At the beginning of this chapter, John, in John, Jesus described himself as the way, the truth and the life. Here, the Spirit is the spirit of truth. And then lastly, the idea about home. John chapter 14 begins with Jesus telling his disciples that his father's house has many rooms and that he's going there to prepare a place for them. In our passage in verse 23, Jesus speaks of his coming with the father to make their home with those who demonstrate their love for him by obeying his teaching. In verse 17, he said that the Spirit lives with us and in his disciples. There is something in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit living within us, which is a foretaste of our living with God forever. This is far more than the idea of home and being a place of security and safety. Paul speaks in terms of our bodies being temples of the Holy Spirit. The temple was the place on earth where God was thought of as dwelling, where heaven and earth came together. So as a result of the Holy Spirit in us, we too become a place where heaven and earth meet and where people can meet with God. So I wonder who will you, who will I be that meeting place with God this week on our front lines? To conclude, when Jesus promised those who love him that he would not leave us like orphans, bereft and alone, but would ask the Father who would send the Holy Spirit to us in his name, he was promising us these things, that all who love him would have a constant, eternal advocate, comforter and helper who would not just be alongside us, but live in us so that we become the dwelling place on earth of God the Trinity, enjoying their love. The Spirit would not only remind us of all that Jesus taught while on earth, but would also continue to teach us in accordance with his nature as the Spirit of truth. Jesus continues to be with us through the Spirit, enabling us to see Jesus and to live the resurrection life that he has secured. What a promise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you send the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, that we haven't been left as orphans, we haven't been left bereft, 
but that Jesus has come to us in his spirit to remind us, to teach us, to comfort us, to plead on our behalf. We thank you for all that is promised through the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we receive you again now. In Jesus' name. Amen. When it feels like the dark Lings longer than the night When the shadows feel like giants Are you chasing me down? Tell me where could I run From your life where could I And within your precious thoughts There's no hiding from your love Thank you so much, everybody, for taking part this morning. Great message, Sally. And it was so lovely to hear from Noel, wasn't it? And that couple in India. Uh, just tremendous to hear from these people. 
there we go. Anyway, just uh, what have I got to say to you? Two things. First thing is, do get your eldership affirmation in, please, uh, via the email address that was uh, sent to you. Uh, if you've not received the information you need to receive, please do contact the office. It needs to be in by uh, uh, midnight on the 31st. Uh, it's course a bank holiday weekend so please do try and get those in it's really important stuff the second thing is continue to pray as we seek god for the future direction uh, of us as a church community how things are going to look as we meet back together and all of those sort of questions and thirdly this is as i said the last time we will be meeting in this way and hopefully next week you will be joining the service that's being streamed from the church. So it will be more of a live experience. So hopefully that will be good. It will be different, but good, hopefully. And so please do come along. You will still be able to access the service after the event. It will be uh, hosted on our YouTube channel. You can look at that. And the DVDs will still go out to folk who need to receive them. So all of that will be the same. It would just look a bit different, but that's a good thing, isn't it? Change is a good thing, sometimes, anyway, at least. But thank you for coming this morning. May God bless you as you seek to follow him this week. May you know his peace and his presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's no hiding from your love.